Mon Dieu, mon Dieu. Morning all. As we prepare our hearts and our minds, as we prepare our beings for our worship of the living God, we remember Jesus who is with us. We remember those who are no longer with us physically. We remember those who've gone home to God and those who've been left behind. Let's prepare our hearts as we join together in hymn number 362 and on the screen, Meekness and Majesty. So, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. We praise you for your presence, for your love to us, that you are the majesty not only of a nation, not only 
Are you the majesty of this planet, but you're the, you, the majesty of all things, the creator of all things. And you love us all as part of your creation. You've made us in your image as your people. To know you, to love you, to follow you and serve you. You came to be with us in the frailty and vulnerability of Jesus who showed us your way of life and love, who dedicated himself to be the servant king, to serve humanity, not only in action and words, but also through sacrifice, as he sacrificed himself out of love for us all, that we can be born again, have a new chance of being your people. Lord God, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made. And we lift him up in our hearts as we follow him in our lives as his majesty. We join together, we sing majesty, worship his majesty. So, Lord, we lift up the name of Jesus, who is our King, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the hope eternal, for he and you are one, and we are one with you through your Holy Spirit, which fills our hearts. Lord, we thank you for your servants who follow you in this world, who serve as Jesus has shown them to be your people. Lord, we think especially on this day for the service of Queen Elizabeth II. And we thank you for her servanthood and her dedication to duty and to the nation. 
We thank you for the service that you've done through your, your servant, Mike Massey, who also has gone home to you. Lord, we thank you for all those who've gone before us who have shown us your way. And we thank you for those who continue to serve those around them, those who are well known and those who are hardly known. We lift them all up into your care, into your guidance, that they may continue to serve with your strength and with your passion. And in that we lift up King Charles III and pray, Lord God, that you may uphold him as he seeks to serve in our nations and in our world. And Lord God, we ask that you be with us, that you help us to serve as you have shown us, that we can serve each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Psalm, some words from Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is humanity that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim in the path of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. So welcome to service this, this morning as we worship God. And as we seek his presence in our hearts and in our lives. We join together with hymn number 20 or on the screen. Be still for the presence of the Lord.
Amen. Please be seated. The theme, as always, of today's service was a theme of celebration, celebrating God's love. Of course, the, the service was prepared just before um, the news of the death of Queen Elizabeth II came through. And yet, we still continue on in celebration, don't we? For we celebrate her life, her reign, and we're thankful for her of her faith. At the same time, we also celebrate other people who have given themselves in service. There will be an opportunity later in the service uh, to come and do some, to light candles uh, as we feel led and called. But today, the theme is celebration. Celebration, and we'll look at why we celebrate later. So, before we do that, is there any, any young people here? Let me just check if there's any young people. Neil is definitely a young person here. I'd agree with that, Neil. <laughs> I'm Janet, yeah, I'm going with that as well. And if you lot want to do anything, no. No, you want to do something, never. All right, all you've got to do is you've got to go around somewhere in this church. I'm not telling you where. There's only one thing, there's, but I want you to go and look for some treasure, what I would call treasure in the church, okay? So you've got to think, it's not easy, what would I call treasure? So go and look around, see if you can find some treasure. And if you find it and point it out to me, I'll come and tell you if you're right or wrong. Go, 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 go. I'll tell you, if, I'll, later on, I'll tell you if you're cold or warm. At the moment, you're very cold. <laughs> and it might not be where you expected. Just go and look, see if you find any treasure. You'll see if, see if you find the same thing I was looking for. Any treasure? Can you see any treasure anywhere? What's that? The table. Could be, well, now, some people say that's a special treasure. If, it's in, if we're in a church of England, that would be called the altar. But it would r really be an al altar if it had a, like a bit of the, a, one of the saints in it or something like that to make it. But this is just, a, we call it a communion table, I do. So that, but that's precious for many people. But that's not what I was thinking of. It, anything else? Sorry? I can't hear you. Well, typical Doris, getting it quite quickly. <laughs> we are the treasure, aren't we? We are the treasure. If you look around, look around now. All of the people here, you look at each other. We are all treasure. We are all treasure. Treasure over there, treasure over there, treasure over there. We are all treasure. Neil, even as a Warsaw supporter, is a real treasure. Sometime, it had to come out sometime, didn't it, Neil? Your treasure, yeah. Your treasure. We're all treasure together. Now, we may not look like treasure. Well, I know I don't. I don't particularly look like treasure. I accept that. And yet we are treasure. I think a few weeks ago, those people who were awake at whatever the service I was taking, it might not have been here because my memory is fading. I talked about treasures of heaven in jars of clay. That wasn't here, was it? I don't think it was here. But I did talk about treasures of heaven in jars of clay. So we are all, we may, if I'm like me, I feel very like crumbly clay at the minute sometimes. Well, at the minute, I feel like crumbly clay. But inside of us, we have the treasure of heaven in the Holy Spirit. And the, some of the treasures are going to go out now to junior church. So, Lord God, we thank you for our young people and pray, Lord, that they may learn more of you and grow in your spirit and in your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may we learn from them as well. For Jesus said, we're not to come as thinking we know it all, but we should come as a little child into the kingdom of heaven, didn't he? 
We should come as a little child. Because Jesus sort of turned everything on its head, didn't he? Have you noticed that? He turned everything on its head. People thought, to get into the kingdom of heaven, you've got to do all these things. Or you've got to be clever enough to know all these things. Or if you know more, you're more important. Jesus said, it's not about that. It's not about how well you're doing in life in this world. It's about how your heart is with God. That's what matters. It's how your heart is with God. Because God sees you as treasures. God even sees me as a treasure. And that's shocking, isn't it? Thank you, Neil. (laughs) Get your own back. It's shocking, but it's wonderfully true that God looks at us as treasures because we are God's children. And that is such a wonderful thing, isn't it? To know we are God's children and that his love for us is overflowing, it is strong, and it's here in our hearts that we can feel it and know it. That when we do things that we shouldn't do, he's always there like a wonderful parent friend to forgive us and say, right now let's try and do a bit better. Let's try and do a bit better. I told you at the time, didn't I? Uh, when I caught my daughter while well, she was just learning to speak, really. Well, now she learned to speak. She'd like now learned to stop breaking things. And we went into a bedroom. Do you want to tell you the story? We went into a bedroom and there's a piece of wallpaper torn off from the wall. And said to Ellie, says, who did that? Knowing that she had this piece of wallpaper in her hand. Who did that? And she looked at us and said, she looked at Wendy and said, Daddy. <laughs> that was, I know, it's funny now. You think, well, what do you do? <laughs> you do. Well, so we said, well, we know you did it and you shouldn't have done it, but let's try and make it better. And don't do it again, don't you? Something like that. And to be fair, I don't think she did do it again intentionally after that. I don't think she did it intentionally after that. That is what we call, or Jesus would call, repentance. Where you change your way. So you don't do things you shouldn't do, but live the way that you should do. You change your life from what you were doing, ripping up bits of paper, like the order of service, for example. You rip up pieces, ripping pieces of paper to actually know, let's see things as precious and that are precious. And of course, the most precious thing we, that for God is people, isn't it? And if we hurt people, if we hurt people, then God is hurt. If we put people down, we're putting God down. If we're saying people are not worthy, are not welcome we're saying God isn't welcome and God isn't worthy because God loves us all let's pray Heavenly Father we come before you thankful for all the wonderful gifts that we have but we're also sorry for the times that we have we've hurt you and rejected you tried to push you out of our lives Lord, forgive us and change our hearts. Change our actions, our thoughts, our words, that we can be living as your, you want us to be as your children, to be loving and caring, to be open and welcoming. Lord, change our ways through the power of your Spirit that we might shine in your light through the good things that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. We say the family prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so in that light, in that light, what do we have to celebrate? So my treasures, as we would say in some places, what do we celebrate? We're thankful for the queen, so we celebrate her life and her reign, don't we? Yeah? We celebrate the love of God, which we can all know personally in our hearts, yeah? We celebrate and pray for the new king, King Charles III. We're thankful for people who've gone before us. And so we think especially of, of Mike Massey, who went home to God last night, uh, and we think of his family. But we're celebrating his life. Those people who don't like football can celebrate this weekend because there's none on. So, I'm not giving you anything there, Neil. Go on. Anything else to celebrate? Diversity. That we're able to come here in freedom. That we're able to worship God in relative freedom in our lives, in our world. How about each other? People who are our family and our friends. People who support us, who we care about. Let's consider some of the things that we should be thankful for and lift them to God. As we have 10,000 reasons, we sing 10,000 reasons.
And so we remain standing as we just pray. Lord God, we just worship your holy name. We know your presence. And we know the wonders of your name. And yet, Lord, and yet, Lord, sometimes we feel confused and uncertain in what the future may bring. We feel confused and uncertain of what we should be doing. And yet we hold on to that eternal promise of your love and your guidance. We pray that your Holy Spirit may fill us and lead us in your ways of love. Amen. We sing 479 out of singing the faith. The King of love, my shepherd is. Please be seated. We've just been having quite a long section of, of prayer and praise, haven't we? As we proclaim the love of God in song and in word, but more importantly, in our hearts. A couple of notices, um, which I will, I'm, not, I'm undoubtedly going to forget some. Uh, as you've heard in the service, Mike Massey passed away last night, and we do pray for his family. Um, there will be ongoing um, chance to have personal prayer and reflection for Queen Elizabeth II 
Uh, we opened up yesterday for a short time and there'll be opportunities through the week to sign a book of condolence or like prayers or take prayers or say prayers ourselves. There's a circuit meeting coming up very soon on the 13th. Those are for the, that's for the um, reps to the circuit meeting only. The, everyone in Evangelist course is happening on Monday evening. If you've got more details, see uh, me or Wendy or there's a poster in the church to look at that. On Friday evening, this week, Friday evening at half past six, uh, uh, our young adults of the circuit are leading a life and soul service, half past six here on Friday. Uh, please come and uh, join with the young people as they put the service together um, and are praying to God and inviting God's Holy Spirit to be with us. So please come and join us on Friday at half past six. Have I forgotten any notices? Bound to have done. Uh, the Zoom um, that we're sharing with Walsall, so if anybody is online at our stream, if you want to go to the Zoom service, we are sharing it with Warsaw. Next week's Zoom service with Warsaw will be from here. Uh, so it will be based from the stream from here. But we will continue to stream as we always do um, on YouTube as well. On this evening at six o'clock, thank you for reminding me, Wendy, she was doing strange signs going <laughs> like that. I thought it was changing gear in a bus or something like that. But what she was trying to say was to remind everyone, we've got a special service tonight at Short Heath, six o'clock. You'll never guess what it's for. Bowling club, bowling club. Do you know the circuit as a bowling club? It's called Trinity Bowling Club, uh, based down in Willenhall. It's, it's over 100 years old. It's their centenary year celebration, so we're having a special service this evening at Shorty as we're celebrating the, the centenary of the Trinity Bowls Bowling Club. All welcome to see how we can try and work out what we do in church to celebrate a bowling club. I'll be trying to think, if you can think of any Bible readings or hymns that are appropriate, just let me know after this service. I've been struggling. Oh, I think that's all the notices. Any more notices? Yeah, that's coming. Is that Shellfield? Shellfield singers? Well... The male voice choir, that's right. Um, interestingly enough, Mike was in the male voice choir as well. So there's, that's coming up. What date's it on? 23rd. At what time? Because 4.30 oh, T. And then the concert after the tea, yeah? That's good. So that'll be nice. Do, who do we see to get tickets? See Yvonne, or can we get them on the door? I know you'd probably need to book the tea, wouldn't you, the food. So have a word with the stewards or Yvonne uh, about tickets for that. That would be lovely. Okay. Let us now continue on with our service, uh, with our next reading, which is our re the lectionary reading from Luke. The reading is Luke 15, verses 1 to 10, a very familiar reading. The parable of the lost sheep. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners to eat with him. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 
in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it. And when he finds it, he rejoices, putting it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and his neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I will tell you, in the same way, there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. The parable of the lost coin. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me, I have lost my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Amen. Thanks, Wendy. It's quite a well-known story, isn't it, that, or a passage of scripture. There you've had Jesus talking to the group, the crowd as usual, and there were all sorts there. There were some people who were considered by the religious leaders as being unsuitable to associate with. Unsuitable to associate with. Because they were considered as being sinners, people who are far from God or been separated from God or people who were unclean. And you don't want to get their uncleanliness, do you? Because these are the sort of people you were supposed to keep away from. These were the sort of people that could well stop you being clean in the sight of God. The implication was they weren't good enough to associate with, not worthy of being near, let alone befriending. And yet that's just what Jesus did, isn't it? He went to all people to be alongside them, to welcome them, and to befriend them. That was Jesus. I love that hymn, uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. The old hymn, yeah? Because when all else fails, you know you've got a friend in Jesus. And no matter how, messed, how, how we mess up things, we have a friend in Jesus who believes in us, who loves us and cares for us always. Jesus, who is a friend of sinners. So when we sin and we do things that we shouldn't do, it doesn't stop him being our friend. We can feel him near us all the time, encouraging us to get back on the right track, like my daughter, encouraging her not to get the paper off the wall. Because Jesus saw people as precious, made in the image of God. He didn't look only at the circumstances in which they found themselves or we find ourselves today. Look at what life has made them or scarred them. But he looks at them as he looks, he looks at us. Look into our hearts, our souls, our beings, the people that we are made to be. And he loves us so much that he died on the cross that we could know God's forgiveness and have a new chance in life. But when the religious leaders saw who he was associating with, saw the sort of people he was befriending, they said, these just people that shouldn't be here, you shouldn't be anywhere near them. And he told three stories. And we've heard two of them there, haven't we? Two of the three stories. But he told three stories, one after another. The first one is about the good shepherd who goes out to find, find that sheep that's lost. Leaving, he had a nice round figure, I like this. He had a, a flock of a hundred sheep, but one got missing. And they could have got missing, they could be anywhere. And they sought, the good shepherd sought that one missing sheep. 
Jesus in John chapter 10, John chapter 10 refers to himself as the good shepherd. The good shepherd. And we are his sheep. We are his flock. And when he talked to Peter, do you remember Peter after, the, after Jesus rose again? And in the Gospel of John, you can read it at the end of the, towards the end of the chapter, in the, at the end of the Gospel. How Peter and others were, were fishing in the boats through the night and they saw Jesus and they caught nothing and Jesus shouts out saying, hey lads, throw your nets to the other side. And they did that and they caught all these fish and then they, they swam over, well Peter did and the others went in the boat, to see this person who they were convinced was Jesus and they ended up by having breakfast with him. And Jesus took Peter aside afterwards, the one who had denied him. And he said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, then feed my sheep. Do you really love me? Lord, you know I do. Take care of my lambs. Do you really love me? Yes, Lord, you know my heart. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, take care of my flock. Peter, who had denied Jesus, was challenged by Jesus, said, okay, that's then, this is now. Take care of my sheep, look after my flock. And in the same way, the implication is in the same way that Jesus went out to feed the flock, to take care of his lambs that would result in his death out of love for his flocks, then Peter should do that later, do that also. And he foretold that Peter would, in doing his task that had been set him, would suffer for it. And sometimes we suffer for trying to reach out to people, don't we? Sometimes we do. These days, it's not so much being killed, though in some countries it still is. In some places it still is. But it's often more ridicule or being ignored or things like that. And yet we're still called, as God's people, to reach out and love and care to the sheep who don't even know they're lost that they might know God, our Saviour, and come home to join the flock through God's Spirit in their hearts. Jesus tells a story of that lost sheep and how the good shepherd goes and finds the, the lost sheep, brings them back. And there is rejoicing because the lost sheep has been found. And then the next story about the woman who loses a coin. And I tell you, these days, we need to keep all our coins, don't we, at the moment, for as much as we can. Well, no, we don't. We have to live as much as normally as we can, don't we? The woman who lost a coin and then searched everywhere to find it again. When she found it, rejoiced and brought her neighbours in and said, let's celebrate. I found my coin that was lost. That's brilliant. And Jesus said, on each of those stories, there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents, who changes their ways, who comes back home, who gets to know God, God's love for themselves. There is more celebration in heaven for a sinner who repents than for all these things. And he said that after the the good shepherd, after the woman who found, found the coin. And he says it also in the next story, which isn't in that, that Bible reading, which is the the lost son, the lost child, the child who wants to take his money and run and enjoy the the laws of this world. To have good parties, to be well fed, have lots of drinks and lots of friends. And he does that until the money runs out, then the friends run out. And is lost and is alone. Through circumstances he never foresaw, But in this case, we're in his own making. And yet, there's always a way home. 
And when he thinks on that and he starts to walk back, he sees his dad, his father, looking out. So his dad spots him from a long way and runs over and greets him and welcomes him home and throws a party. There is more celebration in heaven over a sinner who repents who comes home than there is for anything else. We have in our own ways at various times sinned against God by rejecting God, rejecting God's ways, rejecting other people. And yet we always have a way home. But the good news is that everyone has a way home. Everyone can be picked up and carried by God through Jesus, the good shepherd, and can find peace. But we have to be willing to open our hearts, to let our hearts be renewed and changed through the power of his love with us. Amen. How do we do that? How do we show people that way? There's a way home. It's how we love like Jesus and serve like Jesus. I think probably the strongest thought, one of the strongest thoughts I have of our Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, from her time, was she was dedicated to serve others. She had a great faith. Now she's gone home. She's, she's all right. She's gone home. I do feel for all the family especially the close family and the close friends because it's very hard for them to grieve at this time, isn't it? So we lift them in our thoughts and our prayers. Her faith was central to her service is what she said, isn't it? She was dedicated to service. May we be dedicated to serve each other as the servant king has shown us when he took off his outer garment and he washed his disciples feet in an act of service he said I have given you an example to follow now you do it let us serve like Jesus in our world let's make love real in people's lives because it's the power of love that you can see through service but it's the power of love that really changes our hearts. We sing together 615, let love be real. 615 and sing in the faith.
Please be seated. As we come to our prayers of intercession, Heavenly Father, we just lift up to you all those who have gone before us. We thank you for the life that we have shared with them. We thank you for your servant, Queen Elizabeth II. We thank you for Mike. We thank you for all those who've gone home to you. And we lift up also those who are going home to you soon. May they know your peace in your arms, uplifting them. We pray for their families and their friends. Lord, we lift up those who we know who need your special touch and your care at this time. We pray for Donald, for Emily and Dan, for baby Evie Rose and the family, for the staff and family, and for Steph and family, for Liz and family. We pray for Angela, for Alison and her family, and Catherine and the family. Lord, we pray for all those who are lost, those who are suffering injustice, those who need your warm embrace, your comfort and your peace. We pray for our nation and all those who start in new roles with new expectations. Lord, we pray that you uphold them in your light and in the power of your spirit. We pray for ourselves. Lord God, fill us with your presence. Guide us in your ways that we might share you in our love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to read a statement from the President and Vice President of the Methodist Conference. And then we'll have a time of silence and prayer, in which time... You're invited to come and light any candles if you'd like to light candles. We're thinking that you light the candles for anybody, but you're welcome to light them for Queen Elizabeth II and her family as well. This is the statement from the President and Vice President of Conference. It was with profound sadness that we learned of the death of Her Majesty the Queen. We join the nation in grief and thank God for a long and distinguished reign. The loyalty to and love expressed for Queen Elizabeth across the world is a testament to the life that she led, one marked by dedication, dedicated service to others. She provided encouragement and reassurance, reassurance to a world living through uncertain times. For people of all ages, the Queen has provided constancy, a calm and wise influence at all levels of society. Our nation, the Commonwealth, and the world have been greatly blessed by her life and work. We give thanks to God that her duty as monarch was grounded in a deep faith in Jesus Christ, which has been an inspiration to countless people through her reign. Her dedication, commitment, and service to her people will never be forgotten and will sustain all those who mourn in the coming weeks. Our prayers are for her family who have lost a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and aunt. And we pray that all may be inspired by her service and guided by her example. The prayers of the Methodist people are also offered for His Majesty the King in his new role. Amen. That statement is from the President and Vice President of Conference. So there's a time of quiet reflection where you're welcome to come and light candles while Fred, I think, continues to play, I vow to thee, my country. And we'll finish with another prayer from the President and Vice President, slightly adapted. So we take our time as we remember the Queen and all her family.
We give thanks for the life of Her Most Gracious Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. We honour her life of service built on a firm foundation of faith and an exemplary commitment to duty. Comfort those who mourn and bring peace to those in distress. We pray especially for the Queen's close family and friends. We pray for King Charles III and pray that as he seeks and encourages a world of fairness, wholeness, respect and peace, you may equip him, Lord. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. So we sing of the goodness of God. Number three, two, three. Three, two, three. I will sing the wondrous story.
So, Lord God, as we come to an end of this service of thanksgiving, may our thanksgiving and our praise continue as we go about our lives. Lord, be with us and shine through us. We thank you for the good things that we have and we place them into your hands. Lord, we thank you for the gifts and we offer our gifts to you for the work of your kingdom here and in our community and around the world. Lord, use our gifts to build your kingdom of love and in love. As we follow Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.